Hello, my friend. Welcome back to What's Up in Makeup, my weekly makeup news series where I talk to you about everything that is happening in the makeup industry this week. We'll also talk about all of the products that were launched this week. We're starting off with the latest brand to say that they are going out of business. It is a prestige makeup and skincare brand that is closing by the end of 2022. Then we'll talk about the latest hit to Revlon already very much struggling. Another knock against them. It is not looking good. I'll also tell you everything you need to know about the latest benzene recall. It may be a product you have in your house, so you definitely want to stay tuned for that. And then when we get into the product report, oh my gosh, I haven't seen people this excited about a matte collab in a really long time. So hang tight. We are getting into all of it right about now. Before we get started with What's Up in Makeup, we do have a sponsor for today's show, and it is BoxyCharm. Hello, my friend. I know it's weird. I'm not in my bathroom. I'm actually in my filming space to talk to you about our sponsor for today's video, and it is BoxyCharm. If you are not familiar with BoxyCharm, it is a monthly subscription service that sends makeup, skincare, hair care, and tools to your door. And one thing that they are doing now, if you did not know, is they are letting you choose up to three items in your box, depending on the level of your membership. There are three levels of membership. The first level is the base box. It is $27.99 and you get five full-size items and you get to pick one of those. But the box we're going to focus on today is the second tier, which is the premium box. In the month of October, which we are winding up right Right now they have a very special premium box. And one thing I've always said about BoxyCharm is that it's great for people that are trying to try new brands that they've been really interested in for a long time. And this month for the premium box, BoxyCharm premium subscribers will get a curated box from Tarte Cosmetics. If you are already subscribed to BoxyCharm premium, you're getting this too. It's not just for new subscribers. I am wearing all of it on my face today. So let me go through and show you what you're getting if you subscribe to the premium box. First up is the drink of H2O hydrating boost. And y'all know I'm a skincare geek and hydrating your skin is one of those things that everybody can benefit from in their skincare routine. And it just creates a nice canvas for your makeup to go over top of. I'm going to go ahead and put a couple things on off camera, but we are back. And the next thing I'm going to show you is the eyeshadow palette that's included in this box. It is a warm tone palette with six matte shades and two two like satiny shades and one foiled shade. One thing I like about it as a standalone palette is there really is a nice gradient from light to deep so you can create a variety of looks from day to night. My favorite shade is definitely the shade Vivid. That is a foiled, foiled, beautiful, poppy shade. Absolutely love that one. You will also get the Double Take Awake Micro Liquid Liner and Brightener. The liner is an extremely fine point and the liquid does flow pretty heavy into that. So definitely go in with a light hand, but that line is blackety black, black, black. I love how it bends to the shape of my eye. It's not super stiff, so I can really just kind of bloop and get that on. Drawing a wing was super easy to do. On the other side, you have an eye brightener and the job of that is to go on your lower lash line or your upper waterline if you want to and it's supposed to brighten the whole look up. Next in your box, you're getting a full size Tarte Lights Camera Lashes Mascara. There is a reason why people have talked about this mascara for years. It is legit one of my favorite high end, end mascaras of all time. You get lots of nice length and volume, which my little wimpy lashes absolutely need. A definite underrated and not talked about enough product is Tarte Cream Blushes, and you are getting one if you get this box. This is the Sea Breezy Cream Blush in Pink Sky. It goes on so beautifully. Cream blushes are so on trend right now, and this one is absolutely beautiful. Very easy to apply and blend with the fingertips. And then finally, you are going to get one of their Maracuja Juicy Lips. These are super popular right now, and I hadn't tried one yet, and I was blown away by how creamy it is. It just feels very smooth and very thick on the lips, not sticky at all. And it is a beautiful, beautiful shade. 
I really, really love how when they curated this box, they really thought about giving you as much of a full face as possible so you can try a wide range of things from Tarte if you've been curious about the brand. I forgot to tell you one other thing they let me know is if you do order the premium box, you also get a free gift along with the box. So if you are interested in signing up, I do have a link down below that will take you directly to the sign up page. Thank you so, so much to BoxyCharm for sponsoring this video. And now my friend, it is time for What's Up In Makeup. Let us, my friends, start talking about the makeup brand that is shutting down. I know a lot of you love this brand and it is Lila B. They were sold at Sephora and other retailers and they did put up a post on Instagram announcing the closure. Founder Cheryl Yonati Foland said, quote, my labor of love has run its course. I'm so grateful for our Lila B community of friends. Your love and support over the past seven years is what continues to inspire me and what has kept us going even even through challenging times. I thank you all. And I found it interesting that they shut off comments on that post and also the post announcing they are having a 50% off final sale going on right now. Comments were shut off on that, but they didn't shut off comments on previous posts. And that's where a lot of people are expressing their sadness about the brand going out of business. I wish Cheryl and the rest of the team over at Lila B all the best. And if you are interested in buying anything from the brand, before they shut down, you might wanna head over there now. Poor Revlon, they are, they are really having a tough time right now. They're having a very tough time. So the New York Stock Exchange, they had previously announced that they were going to delist Revlon following their bankruptcy announcement, and they have now done that. Trading has been suspended in the Class A common stock of Revlon as of the market's close on October 20th. Now there is good news for Revlon. I have seen everywhere their hair styly, like blow dry hair brushy kind of tool. It's like 60 bucks. I've seen it everywhere. It seems like people are really excited about that for holiday, but I haven't seen any Revlon makeup or skincare being pushed for holiday. What is happening? So I guess maybe they're just putting everything into that hair brush basket and hoping that it sells enough to keep them afloat. I don't know. It's not looking good, my friend. It is not looking good. Over the past six months or so, we've seen a ton of recalls from big parent companies of their products being contaminated with benzene, which is a known carcinogen. Most of the time it seems to be sunscreen, but now Unilever products are being recalled and they are specifically dry shampoo products. Exposure to benzene can happen through inhalation, through the skin or orally, and has been shown to cause cancers like leukemia and blood cancer of the bone marrow, as well as blood disorders. Effect products are on the screen now. They include mostly Dove, Bedhead, and Tresemme dry shampoos. But this is the thing, before you freak out, you need to know a couple things about these benzene contaminations. So first of all, all of these products in this particular batch were produced before October of 2021. So that may even be scarier to some people because you may have already used it, gone through it, and it may already be gone. We don't know exactly when these products hit the shelves. If you do realize that you have one of these affected products, you of course need to stop using it immediately. You can visit UnileverRecall.com for instructions on how to receive reimbursement for eligible products. But before we start panicking too much, the science behind it is really, really important. So based on an independent health hazard evaluation, even if you used these affected products daily, levels of benzene are so low that they aren't expected to cause any kind of health problems. The other thing you need to know know is that research has not found a link between low level exposure to benzene through cosmetics to cancer, but breathing high doses of benzene can cause some short term side effects like dizziness and confusion. So if you have been using them, definitely stop, but just know that these, the levels of benzene that are being found in these products and previous products that have found levels of benzene are not enough to actually cause cancer based on our current research. Of course, 
scientists don't know everything, so please, please stop using them if you do have them. But where they're really finding issues with benzene and causing cancer is in like factory settings where they may make sneakers and the benzene is getting into the air from the rubber and people are inhaling that and then they're developing cancer. That's really where a lot of people are seeing the connection between benzene and causing cancer. And that's not to minimize the importance of throwing these products away, going to Unilever.com and getting your money back because that is definitely what needs to happen. But it's good to know that it is a lower level of benzene because scientifically that seems to make a huge difference. This next story isn't exactly makeup related, but we are constantly getting shoved down our throat when we are getting new products launched about eco-friendly packaging, about that the packaging can be recycled. You know, we have these refillable packaging, you know, where you throw away a piece of plastic and then you get a smaller piece of plastic to put into the plastic that you're keeping. <laughs> So knowing and understanding how recycling works and the failure of our recycling program here in the U.S. is very, very important when we're considering what we want to buy as consumers. Last week, Greenpeace did a study and they reported that the U.S.'s current recycling program is pretty much bullshit. That's what it comes down to. The study found that 51 million tons of plastic waste were generated by U.S. households in 2021, and only about 5% were actually recycled. Greenpeace USA campaigner Lisa Ramsden told AFP, quote, industry groups and big corporations have been pushing for recycling as a solution. By doing that, they have shirked all responsibility. They did say that mostly it's soda companies that are creating the most plastic, but also, speaking of Unilever, Unilever was on their list as a brand that does make a lot of the waste. They are the manufacturers of Dove and Vaseline and Suave. So those are all made in plastic containers and a lot of people use those products. Therefore, they're creating a lot of waste. One of the biggest problems with our recycling system is that we have all those numbers, right? You flip over the container and it has a little recycling thing and then it's got a number in the back. Well, one and two are the ones that are most likely recycled, but but numbers three through seven are very, very hard to recycle and often not recycled at all. Here's the data. Number one is recycled at a 20.9% rate. And then number two is recycled at a 10.3% rate. But three through seven, those are things like plastic bags, yogurt, or like any of those like tubby kinds of containers, coffee cups, to-go food containers, stuff like that. Those are reprocessed at rates less than 5%. I was asking myself, you know, why is this happening? Why are we going through this process of recycling all this stuff when it's not even going to get recycled? And this is what their data found is that the biggest problems were in collecting mixed recycling bins where everything was mixed together and then having to sort all of that and it just doesn't happen all the time. Another big problem with it is the exposure of workers to toxic chemicals in the melting down and reforming process and that contamination of the plastic during that reformation process makes it impossible for us to be able to store food in those kinds of containers when they're remade into new containers. The final problem Problem that they cited was just how expensive the system is just overall. And it's always that they present all of these problems, but there are no solutions. We have a solution. And we've been talking about the solution on What's Up In Makeup. You've probably heard it, you know, from brands, you've heard it in the news. It's reusing. Reusing those containers is the solution. And there are countries that are a model that they are doing this in their countries. Countries like India, Austria, Portugal, Chile. They are all doing these more of this reusing and we could do it here in the U.S. if companies provided the opportunity to do refills. You send back the product and then they refill it. It sounds like a logistical nightmare, but I would be very, very curious to know how in a huge country like India, how they're doing this. And then we can just kind of take tips from there and see if that would work in our country. It's so frustrating because I don't think a lot of Americans realize that the overuse of plastic, they're just thinking, oh, I'll just recycle it. Or I have to, I can get a refill for whatever this product is. So I'm, I'm helping the environment. No, we're not. We're not helping the environment. Anytime we can reuse or just cut back on purchasing, that's how we're helping the environment. 
This next story is going to be of particular interest to you. If you have used, if you do use, or if you know someone who uses hair relaxers or straighteners, I'm not talking about like flat iron, like straighteners. I'm talking about chemical hair relaxers and straighteners. It was a new study that was just released by the Journal of the National Cancer Institute that has found the use of hair straightening products and chemical hair straighteners may considerably increase the risk of developing uterine cancer among those who frequently use them, but it's really important to pay attention to the details to see how at risk you are if you have or continue to use these products. Here's the deal. So researchers tracked about 34,000 racially diverse women aged 35 to 74 for about 11 years, and this is what they found. 378 of them developed uterine cancer, so that's only about 1.1%. But what they found was that the women who used relaxers, chemical relaxers and straighteners were at a significantly higher rate to get uterine cancer. They only had women in the study, so I'm going to be speaking on those terms. They said that 1.64% of women who never use chemical straighteners would develop uterine cancer by the age of 70, but women who frequently used those products on their hair, the risk goes up to 4.05%. They found that women who had used these types of products more than four times in the previous year had more than two and a half times the risk. It's important to note that the risk wasn't specifically attributed to being higher in black women, but because black women are more likely to use these products, black women were more likely to have uterine cancer. They said this also might be because a lot of black women started using these products at such a young age, eight, nine, 10, 11 years old. So then after publication of this, there was a lawsuit like there usually is. This one is brought by a woman in Missouri. So in 2018, she was diagnosed with uterine cancer. She's filed a lawsuit against L'Oreal saying that their products were inherently dangerous and that they knew that they were dangerous and didn't put any warnings on the labels. She blames these products for causing her uterine cancer. According to the case, the plaintiff regularly began using the defendant's products around the year 2000 when she was only 10 years old and that she used them regularly, keeping them in her hair for the allotted time that the instructions told her to. And she continued to use them until March of this year. When she was diagnosed in 2018 at 28 years old, she did have to have a full hysterectomy. Per the complaint, she says that nobody in her family has had uterine cancer, that she's the first one. Question you may be asking yourself, and what I was kind of asking myself, is if this study just came out, how can she sue L'Oreal for knowing about it if the study literally just came out? Well, this is the argument against that. The case suggests that L'Oreal knowingly put ingredients like phthalates and a couple of other things in their relaxers and that they knew that they caused endocrine disruption and that those studies date back long enough for L'Oreal to have at least put a warning on the box or replace those ingredients with something else that wasn't an endocrine disruptor. This is not a class action lawsuit. This is just one person versus the company. So she is seeking economic losses, including medical care and lost earnings and not non-economic losses, including physical and mental pain and suffering, infertility, emotional distress, inconvenience, loss of enjoyment, and impairment of the quality of life, past, and future. So if you use these products or if you know people that use these products, I would definitely talk to your doctor about it and see if they see that as being valid, a risk for you. Uh, do your own research and decide whether that's a product you want to continue to use. This is scary. This is terrifying. This is absolutely terrifying. And it is something that I'm hoping that the cosmetic industry, these, these companies that make these products, they really consider because we're not talking about some frivolous lawsuit here. This is about real harm and real damage that's happening to real people. So, you know, when we go through trends here on What's Been Makeup, a lot of them are freaking stupid. A lot of them are just dumb. Either they're putting themselves in harm, they're putting somebody else in harm, or they're just, you look at it and like, that is just so dumb. This one is not dumb. This one is actually very important. As you may know, in the U.S., we have elections coming up in a couple of weeks. And it is very, very important, in my opinion, that everybody vote. That is how democracy works. That is what makes the United States different than a lot of places where there is no democracy. Voting is so critical and so important. There is a trend that I hope will get even more traction than it has because I don't feel like it's gotten enough. It is hashtag nail the vote 
22 and it is organized by moveon.org and they're encouraging people to paint their nails and post a picture of their voting inspired nails now if you don't want to paint your own nails they are actually you're selling nail stickers over on their website there's two different designs available and you can use those if you like it is important to note though and I think it's important for me to tell you that this website is run by progressive Democrats who are specifically using the money from the nail stickers to get Republicans out of office. But no matter who you're voting for, voting is very, very important and you can still do the trend. You can still, you know, write vote on your nails and photograph it and use the hashtag. I myself just got my practice ballot in the mail yesterday. I'm going to be filling that out and I will definitely be voting on election day and I hope that you will too. All right, my friend, let us get into the product report, starting with that matte collection that I told you about that people are losing their minds over. It is the Black Panther Wakanda Forever collection. It is an 18-piece collection inspired by Wakanda and its people, including liquid lipsticks, liquid liners, and an eyeshadow palette. Prices for the limited edition collab are $23 to $39. The collection launches on Mac's website on November first and the Black Panther Wakanda Forever film launches in theaters on November 11th. It is a gorgeous, gorgeous collection. The only reason why I know about this next movie is because my son was actually watching it on Netflix and I could not help but watch it. It like pulled me in but I didn't really know 100% what was happening because I didn't watch it from the beginning but I'm gonna watch it from the beginning. So if you've seen The School for Good and Evil, you have to tell me what you thought of it and whether it's wa worth watching the whole thing because I haven't seen the whole thing yet. This is the Makeup Revolution and the School for Good and Evil collection. Prices range from $7 to $20. There is the Spell Book Shadow Palette and then there's a bunch of products that they're like dual sided. It's a school where there's two you know different classes of kids and they're battling each other. So there's the Nevers and the Evers. That's how they've set up this collection. So there's the Nevers or the Evers double ended liquid shadows and they did the same thing with potion lip oils and then they also have perfume that incidentally have no descriptions on what they smell like, which I think is super weird. There's also a duality face and eye brush set, a beautification mirror, cosmetic bag, and a set of eye sleeping masks. One is a never and one is an ever. Very cute. If you're not digging on that from Makeup Revolution, you might dig on their Grinch collection. That just launched as well, $5 to $20 per product. There's a 17 shade eyeshadow palette, a snarky highlighter, which is absolutely freaking adorable. There's also the Whoville Heart Beauty Sponge, Grinch Please False Lashes, Little Max Lip Kit, Resting Grinch Face Liquid Eyeliner, that thing. Like I almost want it because I just want to touch it. It's fuzzy, it's a fuzzy. The eyeliner. I never thought I would want something like that, but this makes me want that. It is so freaking cute. But it is vegan. I just want to make sure you know it's vegan fur. It's not actual Grinch fur, just so you know. <laughs> This next product is what I am wearing on my eyes today. ColourPop, just keep sending it all over. It's this right here. This is the ColourPop C3PO palette, $16. They're also selling this in bundles with the Darth Vader palette and the Star Wars palette. This is what it looks like. We'll talk about it more in PR, Purchase Product of the Week, in a few minutes. Now let's pop over to Sephora. If you are looking for gift sets, I did an epic, epic product launch video on Wednesday. I will link it down below for you. All of the products, but Sephora was not done yet. There are still a bunch of gift sets that launched just from Wednesday to today. So let's talk about those. If I've covered any of these in the past, by the way, please forgive me. I think they're all new though. Let's start with the Sephora Favorites mini holiday must-have sets. It's $30. It does focus on Sephora bestsellers, but not Sephora brands. So there's deluxe sizes of the Ben Benefit Cosmetics Royal Lash Mascara, Summer Friday's Jet Lag Mask, and the Sol de Janeiro Brazilian Boom Boom Body Cream. As far as travel sizes, there's a Charlotte Tilbury Airbrush Flawless Setting Spray, the Living Proof Perfect Hair Day Dry Shampoo, and the Say Glowy Super Gel Highlighter in Star Glow. That is a universal champagne. Danessa Myricks launched an Infinite Chrome Holiday Kit. That's $35. It does come in two different colorways. And the shades for this are all new, which I think is pretty cool. 
cool. You get full sizes of the Infinite Chrome Flakes Multi Chrome Gel for eyes and face and a Twin Flames Liquid Eyeshadow. Patrick Stars One Size, they came out with a gift set. It is the Line Up and Lash Up Eyeliner Mascara Value Set. $20 there, you do get a full size liquid liner and a travel size mascara in that set. From Smashbox, they are really, really pushing their primers. It seems like that is their most popular product. Smashbox has not been doing well. Uh, so I'm hoping that they do well with these primer sets. There's two different kinds. They're both $42. We have the Skin Obsessed Color Correcting Primer. You get a full size of the anti-redness primer and a mini multitasking spray. And then the After Party Starter Primer Duo. This is the full size blurring primer with a mini of the multitasking face spray. Freck Beauty. Now this did not list whether it was full size or travel size or I had, I had to look it up. I had to figure it out. So I think I've got it. This is the best of Freck holiday set. It's $25. You get a full size of their freckle maker, which is exactly that. It's supposed to make little freckles on your face that actually stay on your face and don't run all over your face. And then you get a mini size of their Lash Rocket Mascara. Next up from Rose Ink, the mini satin lipstick set, $20 there. Shades included are a muted coral called Poet and a terracotta pink called Enigmatic and a limited edition shade called Alluring, which is a bright berry. Buffing up the price a little bit for Westman Atelier. They have the Petal Edition Lip and Complexion Holiday Set. It is $134. It's a full-size blush, highlight, and a lip balm. But I just wanna let you know there is literally a $0 discount on this. You can get each individual product for that exact price. So if you're just looking for one of those, you're not getting a deal, essentially. You're just getting it because it's a gift set. That's, all, that's the only reason why you want to get this. Dior has released a limited edition clutch and lipstick set. That's $240. You get four full size lipsticks and a little clutch. So how this breaks down is the lipsticks are $48 each regular price. So that's $168. That means that the clutch is $72 just so you can decide what value you're getting out of that. I feel like I need that in my brain for something this expensive. Like I need to know what I'm actually paying. We have two launches that are not gift sets. We have from Give by Gwen Stefani, the Double Dip in 2-in-1 Lip Color Remover and Hydrating Lip Mask, $24. I looked at it and I was like, wait a minute. So it's a lipstick remover and a lip mask. So what you do is you remove your lips, liquid lipstick and then you you know wipe it off with the tissue or whatever and then you put it back on as a lip mask. And then I thought to myself, what are the ingredients in this? And the first ingredient is sunflower seed oil. So if you have like an oil or butter based lip mask, you might be able to just use whatever lip mask you have as a lipstick remover. Maybe. I wonder, I'm seriously wondering if other products work like this too. It's definitely something to try. I'm going to try it. But if you want the one by Give by Gwen Stefani, that's available. Also launched from Pat McGrath, the Perma Precision Liquid Eyeliner in a new matte black. So if you didn't like the shiny one, they have a matte black one now. That's $34. Four brands have products that are listed as coming soon and then we'll pop over to Ulta. So let's start with Lawless, the Winter Beach One Eyeshadow Palette, $27. And it's kind of cute, I think, to do like a beachy theme in the fall winter because not everybody has to stop going to the beach in the fall and winter, depending on where you live. So I think it's kind of cool. Along with that, they also have the mini winter beach lip plumper set. That's $27. You get three mini forget the filler lip glosses there. Then from Tom Ford, the Soleil look set, $140. It says it includes minis of the Soleil Blanc shimmering body oil, sheer cheek duo, and the Soleil balm frost lip balm. But if you read further, it says the sizes and actually it seems like the only mini is the oil. The other two seem like they are full size and they should be at that price point. That makes more sense. Natasha Denona is launching the mini nude eyeshadow kit. It is a mini nude eyeshadow palette and an eyeshadow brush. It's $27. You get a five pan palette and a blending brush. And this is one of those times I know we talked about last week that I hate double-sided brushes, but I feel like in this case, a double-sided brush is appropriate. You know, like kind of like they do in the Sigma eyeshadow palettes. They give you that double-sided brush so you can like functionally use it. I don't know. I keep going back and forth now about double-sided brushes. Maybe I do like them in some occasions. <laughs> 
situations. I don't know. Storing them sucks though. Storing them sucks. But some of you were telling me in the comments that you store double-sided brushes in a makeup bag, which I think is really smart. I think I'm going to start doing that. Anyway, back to products. I got distracted. We have the Fashion Fair Lip Teasers Lip Gloss, $27. There are going to be five different color choices available. They say it is a hydrating, cushiony, serum-like formula that glides on effortlessly and delivers the color intensity of a lipstick with the brilliance of a gloss. And that wraps up Sephora. So let's go ahead and pop over to Ulta, a little less intense over there. First product stands out to me right away is the Tarte Tartlet Energy Amazonian Clay Palette for $45. And we talked about this when it was sneaked on Tarte's website before. It is now available and I got so much shit for saying this looked like a boring palette. It looks like a boring pa It looks like a boring, I'm not gonna take it back. It looks like a boring palette. What would make it less boring for me if they put some duochromes in there? Same same color shade, same thing, but some duochromes in there or some more foiled shades. It looks like it's just satin and matte. And I completely respect people that only like satin and matte shades. Total respect for you. That's just not my jam. So that's why it's boring to me. Like even just one foiled shadow would be nice. That's just my opinion. But if you disagree, I get it. And Tarte knows their audience. They know their people. They know what their people like and they're giving it to them. And there's nothing wrong with that. Speaking of me not having a preference for what a brand comes out with, this is the Fresh Sugar Sugar Tinted Lip Balm Set. It's $35. You get minis of the Advanced Therapy as well as the Scents Rosé, Bloom, and Peony. Why didn't they make the bakery kinds of scents? Like I want to, I don't want to eat flowers. I want to eat something like, like food. Give me the food scented lip products, not the flowers. That's just my, my personal preference. Again, if you like flowers on your lips, more power to you. It's just not my jam. KVD Beauty had previously released uh, some products with this packaging. And now we know that this packaging is called Moon Garden. Uh, it's designed by their resident artist. And now they're releasing the Moon Garden eyeshadow palette. $42.50 there. I, the packaging is odd, but it is very intriguing. Like I looking close at it, like my eyes keeps going all over the place. And every time I look at it, I see new things. So I don't hate that. I kind of love that, but I'm not sure how much I love this color story. I just don't know. I haven't decided yet. Have you tried Kat Von D, not Kat Von D. Have you tried KVT Beauty eyeshadows recently? What's their formula like right now? Is it good? Is it worth trying? I would love to know because I used to buy stuff way back in the day, but I don't know if it's the same formula or not. Color pop over at Ulta, of course, always something new. We have the Fairy Well Pressed Powder Palette, $18. Really pretty natural palette with some foiled shades in there. Something to make it pop, something to make it interesting, something to make it stand out, to give you different textures so you can do more with it. Do you hear me justifying? It's a natural palette. I know. I'm sure it's going to sell. Just like Tarte's is going to sell, theirs is going to sell. ColourPop knows their people. Tarte knows their people. Along with that, they have holiday color sticks. Those are $7 each. There's four color choices there. And then the holiday cheek dew serum blush, $8 each. There's three color choices with that. And this, this I don't get. Maybe you can explain it to me. Euphoria is now at Ulta. What I want to know is why are their prices so damn high? Like I know that they're popular on TikTok. I know it went viral on TikTok. I get it. But why the hell am I buying a blush for $36? dollars a liquid blush and that kind of packaging for $36 why is that happening I I don't get it I don't get it and maybe that's why I am not part of euphoria nation I don't get it so the BYO blush color changing blush oil that went viral is over there now if you want it also the pregame daily Pro protective primer that's $38 the pregame setting spray moisturizing skin serum is $36 and then the dewy gloss hydrating nourishing lip gloss is $26 there's five color choices what is in this that makes a lip gloss $26 it's not like this is freaking Dior like what I guess it's the Dior for somebody, not, not, for, I don't get it. Like it doesn't look special. Why? Explain, please. <laughs> Just two things coming soon before we go into PR purchase product of the week. We have the Makeup Revolution Ultimate Lights Collection. The Cheek Glow Palette is $8. Shimmer Lip Kit in Bare Lights or Chauffeur Lights, $8. You get a lip gloss and a lip liner there. And then the Shadow Palette in Feathered Nude or Feathered Smoke, $9. Love the way these shadows look. But then when you, when you see it closed, it like takes away all of the gorgeousness of this palette. Like I don't know what they were thinking on this outer packaging, but it could be just the photo like it might just be the photo of it might not look about like this in real life but don't you think like it dulls the look of the shadows when you see it close it's like 
Like they over designed it, you know what I mean? And then finally from EXA, which is a relatively new brand, the all-in starter kit, $39. The Jumpstart Smoothing Primer is a mini light show color melt in recess. And then the 1018 mascara, you'll get all of that in that kit. All right, my friend, PR Purchase Product of the Week. Let's talk about this baby. This is the Star Wars C-3PO palette. I will tell you that I didn't know that C-3PO was letters and numbers until I was a full-on adult. I thought it was C-3PO. I'll put the spelling here. I had no idea. You know, R2-D2, I thought it was spelled like this. My brother was a huge fan, and maybe that was why I wasn't. But anyway... <laughs> So I don't know much about this, but I will tell you about the eyeshadow formula in here. It's very cute. I love this little oh my and beep beep bloop over here. It's very cute. So I used today on my eyes for the very first time this shade in the crease, up in the crease, and then this shade up in the crease, and then on my lid in the outer corner I used this one inner corner, uh, middle to inner corner, I use this one, and then I touched up the inner corner with this guy here. This guy is weird. I've never tried a ColourPop shadow quite like this. See the dent in that? Let me put my finger in this. It's like, it's like a super shock in there. It's so weird. It really feels like a super shock in a pan. I don't get it. And then when you swatch it, it looks more gold when you put it on your eye than it does in the pan. In the pan, it looks like it's gonna be more of like a champagne. It's not, it's like a gold. It's so weird, it's so freaking weird. And then I did have one other complaint about it and it's this brown shade. I had so much trouble blending this guy, so much trouble. I had to go in and blend and go in and blend. And then I had to put more of this shade to kind of help move the brown around. It was really, really hard to blend. But the rest of the shadows worked just the way normal ColourPop shadows work for me. It's just, this is definitely Definitely not my favorite palette to work with just from first impressions. Actually, let's just do some quick swatches of the palette. I'm just gonna swatch them all on my arm for you. So there are the swatches for you of the entire palette. And I will tell you that that dark brown is very buildable. That swatch is not doing it justice the way that it applies to the eye. I'm gonna go ahead and swatch it one more time just so you can see the build on it. So there's the double swatch and there's a triple swatch. Now I feel like I have to do that for all of them. Hold on a second. So there we go. There's the double swatch of all of them. So you can really see how it builds. And the colors that I like in here that I would use regularly, I have in other palettes. So this is actually going to my friend, Teresa, who helps me to moderate my chats. She loves Star Wars stuff. So Teresa, I'm putting this in your box. I didn't tell you that yet, but this is going in your little gift box that I'm sending out. Notable sales this week, we have the spooky sale code you're gonna use over at Kaleidos. It is 25% off over there. And then you can use code spooky22 for 25% off over at Koki. And we know if you've been, had your YouTube open in your subscription feed on your homepage, you've probably had somebody talking about their Sephora sale recommendations because that has started for Rouge members. Rouge is October 28th through November 7th, 20% off via IB November 1st through November 7th. That's 15% off. That's where I'm going to be. Insider is November 3rd to November 7th. That's 10% off. And then throughout the entire sale for everybody, 30% off of Sephora collection. Now I do want to let you know, and I talked about this before, but just in case you didn't hear it, last year they had the Sephora sale go through and then they gave 20% off to everybody after the sale was over. And I would be surprised if they didn't do it this year, but I just wanna let you know, in case you didn't know that happened last year, that that might happen again. But we don't know. So it's like a gamble, whether you take your 10% off now or you gamble on potentially getting the 20% off later. But it's like, it's so cruddy that they did that. And I think they're gonna do it again. I wouldn't be surprised. And finally, our artist shout out of the week. We have Danny Showbody and he is from Mexico and he does a lot of his art on other people. So I don't know which one is him, if any of these are him, but absolutely incredible art. So I wanted to show you. So this one was made inside the Terror Online 2022 workshop and he's really, really good at movie quality skulls. The level of realism in this is absolutely freaking nuts. The different shots and the different lighting, I'll show you the second look, uh, shot of the look, it really does give it a different effect. And I honestly, I would love to see the process of how something like this goes on, but I would imagine that would be a pain in the butt for him because God knows how many hours it takes to, to make something like this. Second look, I want to show you something different. This is his Gene Simmons look. 
Like what? Are you kidding me right now? It does look like the tongue though is like a removable thing that they're just biting on, but it doesn't matter. It's still freaking cool because it looks real. I also love how he added his skull art to such a classic makeup look that a lot of people are very familiar with. Now let's go ahead to the third one. And this is a pumpkin look and I thought I'd seen all of the pumpkin looks, you know, for the most part. I've never seen anything like this. This is freaking incredible. I do think it's the layers for me on this. I think it's the layers, how it goes from that crushed pumpkin headpiece into the skeleton with the pumpkin face and the contacts and the pumpkin seeds down to the brown vines and the painted pumpkin seeds on the chest. It is just so freaking cool. Like I, I could look at this all day and see something new. Maybe not all day, I, it's hyperbole, but I could look at this for a really long time. It is so neat. And all of his looks are like that where I'm looking at it and like, damn, like I see so many things in this. It's really, really cool. I just followed him. Highly recommend you go follow him too. I will leave his Instagram link down below for you. And that, my friend, was What's Up in Makeup this week. Thank you so, so much for watching. And of course, thank you to the What's Up in Makeup Facebook hunters. Their names are scrolling below me. Thank you so much for all of your submissions over the past few days. I know I just said hello to you like three days ago and thank you to you three days ago. But if you've contributed in the last three days, thank you so much for doing that. I appreciate you. Our chat today will be at regular time at 10 a.m. Eastern time. Hopefully you can join us, hang out, talk about makeup. I would love to do that with you. But if you cannot do that, it is no problem at all. You can always catch it on the replay by going to my channel page. You can click on the video titled live chat, or if you're subscribed, just go to your subscription feed. It should be right there. So if you're not subscribed, that's the easiest way to do it is to subscribe and it'll just be there and you don't have to worry about trying to find it. Thank you again for watching. If you enjoyed the show, please give it a thumbs up. And if you would like to watch more from me because you loved it so much, YouTube should be recommending a couple of videos for you right over here to watch, including that product report, that mega product report. I'm gonna put that for you right there. And YouTube's gonna pick something for you right there. But if you do have to go, it is no problem at all. Totally get it, you got stuff to do. Thank you for hanging out as long as you did. And mad love to you. And I will see you in a video very, very soon. Bye.